Now to a local 12 exclusive about an all-American baseball player who died of cancer. Tonight, that boy's father claims the leukemia that killed his son was caused by radiation that drifted from a nearby plant once used to process uranium for nuclear bombs. Dwayne Pullman begins his investigation into that plant by examining Zach Farmer's life and death. Zach Farmer was the kind of kid you love. He always wanted to give back. A gifted Southpaw. He just lived to be on the mound. And three-time All-American. You don't see that very often in Pike County, Ohio, do you? No, not, not like that. Zach was legendary, playing on this field in Piketon, honored to this day right out front when you enter the stadium. His dad, Larry, coached him. I could feel him when he was playing, you know, me coaching a little bit. You know, like so many others, Larry watched in awe. And you're watching him as a dad live his dream. Oh, absolutely. Best thing in the world. Zach could have gone straight to the minor leagues. Instead, he chose to be a Buckeye. And he just liked Ohio State. He was on his way to greatness there, too. When in April of 2014, Zach got sick. He had flu-like symptoms. It wasn't the flu. Acute myeloid uh, leukemia. Yeah. AML, an aggressive cancer that often kills in months. The diagnosis was devastating. He pulled the cover up over his head. Tough day. That was a tough time. You reliving it? That's hard. Zach was just 19 years old. Now he was facing a cancer that usually strikes someone in their 60s. His dad thought that was odd. It is odd to the doctors, too. Even stranger, the National Cancer Institute states exposure to radiation is one of the leading causes of adult AML. Larry Farmer began to think about his family's home, which was right next to this U.S. government fence that wraps around this. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant, a 3,400-acre compound containing massive buildings designed for one purpose, making enriched uranium, most of it for building up America's nuclear arsenal. In the production of uranium-235 for military use and defense of our way of life. Built in 1952 and closed in 2000, this plant is one of the largest facilities of its kind in the world. Here, enormous amounts of uranium were processed for weapons and later for fuel in reactors. Now, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, 2.2 million tons of hazardous waste is stored here, including 21,000 metal cylinders containing depleted uranium hexafluoride. In all, 415 facilities and structures on this site are contaminated. And a little more than a mile away on the southeast side where the wind blows. Absolutely. Is that home where Larry raised Zach and the rest of the family? Uh, we lived in a hot spot. A radioactive hotspot. Absolutely. This air quality monitor across the street from Zahn's Corner Middle School is four miles from the plant. In 2017, the monitor picked up Neptunium-237 and in 2018, Americium-241. Both are known cancer causers. The U.S. Department of Energy, or DOE, which oversees the plant and the monitor, disclosed those findings last year. After additional tests revealed enriched uranium inside the school, Zahn's Corner was closed in May of last year. In response to our questions, a spokesperson at DOE's Portsmouth Paducah Project Office wrote to me, stating there is no radioactivity detected above naturally occurring levels, insisting there is no public health or safety risk from radioactive material preventing Zahn's Corner Middle School from opening. The school district's superintendent says the school board made the right decision to close Zahn's Corner. DOE said it was fine. Well, DOE still says it's fine. It, it's not fine. Any level of radiation, in my mind, um, is not something that's suitable for children. Larry Farmer's family home was four times closer to the plant than Zahn's Corner Middle School. I blame myself for living there. He says his son talked to him about that. We probably lived in the wrong place. He said that? Sure. You moved from there? Yeah. Why? I never really moved back in after Zach was diagnosed. 
Zach endured agonizing treatments. Yeah, I seen him crying. And never seen him cry. Battling to make it back to the mound. That's all he wanted to do. Just get back and play the game. Get back and play the game. Yeah. And for a brief moment, it looked like he would. The cancer was in remission. But in 2015, the cancer came back. Yeah. Within weeks, a doctor delivered tragic news. And she just said, Zach, you're, it's got you. I imagine you cried together. Yeah. Zach Farmer died at 757 on the morning of August 4th, 2015. His father lost more than a son. That was my best friend. Now Larry Farmer looks out over his new property, many miles away from the house where he and Zach once called home. Zach Farmer lost his life to leukemia, but his father believes what caused his son's cancer was drifting in from that plant right next door. What killed your son? Uh, the waste off his A plant. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant. Sure, it's, that's, my, that's what I think. So you believe the government's responsible for the death of your son? Yeah. The U.S. Department of Energy did not answer my direct questions about Larry Farmer's claims, but in its statement says, radioactive elements picked up by all air monitors on and around the Portsmouth site are below limits set by state and federal environmental laws. You can read DOE's complete response on local12.com. Next week, parents grieve the loss of another child to another cancer. And the father of a young girl who died is a key person who voted to close that school. My local 12 investigation, Drifting Death, continues Monday night, live at 11. I'm Dwayne Pullman. I'll see you then. Yes, she can try your patience. Kate Smith was a typical teen. So you guys went at it. Oh, yeah. But she was full of fun and happiness, too. She liked to play pranks on people and joke with people and just have a good time. In 2010, Kate was about to enter eighth grade when her hand began to ache. So I told my wife, I said, you know, maybe you better take her doctor. The doctor took an x-ray. What came into focus would change the Smith family forever. You could see it right in here. Big, round yep. mass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other masses were discovered, too, including tumors in Kate's lungs. She was riddled with growths. Yes. The diagnosis would leave Kate and her family in disbelief. It was rhabdomyosarcoma. A rare type of cancer. And when Kate's parents asked about treatment, they were stunned by the doctor's answer. Then he said there's no cure. Basically a death sentence in the yeah. hospital. Doctors explained treatments would only delay the inevitable. Kate chose to fight anyway, enduring rounds of radiation and chemo. And of course she wanted to do it because she didn't want to die. Kate's dad began wondering whether this nearby facility, the now closed Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant, which once processed uranium for America's nuclear bombs and reactors, was connected to his daughter's cancer. I ain't gonna say that it it didn't come from there, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you basically suspect it did, did, but you don't have proof. Right. Then, last year, the U.S. Department of Energy, or DOE, which oversees the plant, reported this air quality monitor, four miles from the facility, picked up Neptunium-237 and Americium-241, both known cancer causers. And that monitor is located right across the street from Zahn's Corner Middle School, the same school Kate attended for three years. Knowing what I know now, and knowing that she'd just done her fourth, fifth, or sixth grade at Zahn's, and then seventh grade she'd moved to the high school, and then beginning of her eighth grade year was when we found out she had cancer. Inside the school, more testing revealed enriched uranium. In a statement, DOE says there is no radioactivity detected above naturally occurring levels at the school and that there is no health threat. Pike County's health commissioner disagrees. 
Oh, it's absolutely a threat. There's no transparency with DOE. According to them, there's nothing at the school that's harmful, which, which is interesting to me because they operate on ALARA, which is basically, you know, radiation as low as reasonably achievable. Kate continued to fight her rare cancer, bolstered by surprising support from Luke Bryan, the country music superstar. He met Kate through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They became friends. So they exchanged phone numbers, she, and he would call about every, every other week, or they Luke would text. Bryan. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. He called her. Mm -hmm. All the time. Just see how she was doing. Mm -hmm. Check on her. Kept tabs on her. Very good man. Against the odds, Kate began beating the cancer. I thought they'd had it. Well, it was gone. But it came back. On February 28, 2013, surrounded by family and friends, Kate, who was just 15 years old, took her last breath. You, you smile through the pain, don't you? I know. I have to. <laughs> I do. I mean, otherwise, yeah, I couldn't do it. Last year, the Scioto Valley Local School District's Board of Education voted to close Zahn's Corner Middle School. DOE disagrees with the decision, insisting in a statement that there is no public health or safety risk from radioactive material preventing Zahn's Corner Middle School from opening even today. But members of the school board say they did the right thing, including Kate's dad. That's Wayne Smith on the left. He was elected to the school board the same year his daughter died. You shut that school down. Yes, we did. Even though you knew it would be a problem because you were packing them in at other places. Why? Because it's not safe. Wayne says closing Zahn's Corner was the right decision. In addition to radioactive elements that were discovered here, at least five children who attended this school developed cancer. Three of them died, including All-American pitcher Zach Farmer and Wayne's beloved daughter, Kate. Been on this board, I, I'm there to look out for these kids and take care of them and the staff. And if we let them keep going, there, there could be some more that end up like Kate. The U.S. Department of Energy would not answer my direct questions about a connection between Kate's deadly cancer and that plant, but insists the level of radiation at Zahn's Corner is below state and federal environmental limits. Later this month, I'll show you how far those radioactive elements may have drifted as well as the cancer rates for Pike County. My local 12 investigation drifting death is far from over. I'm Dwayne Pullman. From an all-star pitcher. He just lived to be on the mound. Who died from acute myeloid leukemia. Tough day, that was a tough time to the teenage daughter of a school board member. She, she liked to play pranks on people and joke with people and just have a good time. Who died after another rare diagnosis. It was rhabdomyosarcoma. A growing number of families here in Pike County say too many children. They took something special from me. And adults. That was my best friend, you know, and my son. Are dying of cancer. So there's a lot of cancer here. Quite a bit. It's everywhere in this county. Pike County's Health Commissioner, Matt Brewster, agrees. We've got alarming cancer rates. After crunching numbers from 2011 to 2015, the Ohio Department of Health published this cancer map last year, revealing Pike County is the number one spot for cancer in Ohio, with a cancer rate of 508.9 per 100,000. That is nearly 16% higher than the national cancer rate. In a more detailed report, Ohio's health department found on average there are 179 cancer cases with 67 deaths each year in Pike County, which according to the U.S. Census has a population of only 27,772. There's no doubt there's elevated cancer levels, elevated you know health conditions. It, it's, it's no surprise. Brewster and many others here are convinced cancers and other illnesses in Pike County are connected to this. The now closed Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant, which once processed uranium for America's nuclear bombs and reactors. Brewster says he and others have conducted health surveys of people living within 10 miles of the plant, revealing even more stunning numbers. We have over 600 people that's stating that the plant has caused you know, health problems for 
for that individual. Do you have any doubt that the cancer rates in Pike County are caused by that facility? There has to be a direct correlation. You know, you follow the breadcrumbs and, and you end up with, you know, it's pretty obvious. You know, there's uh, certain cancers are caused by certain things and we only have one, you know, plant that can, that can cause some of those things. Last year, this air quality monitor, which is four miles from the facility and across the road from Zahn's Corner Middle School, picked up Neptunium-237 and Americium-241, both known to cause cancer. Inside, further testing found enriched uranium, which caused the school to close. In a statement, the U.S. Department of Energy, or DOE, which oversees the plant and monitor, insists there is no public health or safety risk from radioactive material preventing Zahn's Corner Middle School from opening because DOE says there was no radioactivity detected above naturally occurring levels. The health commissioner says there's nothing natural about this radioactivity. Anything above background increases risk. Look, that's our big concern here. We're not talking about something that takes a very large dose. The air monitor near Zahn's Corner is one of many. More than two dozen air, water, and soil monitors around the plant have consistently picked up radioactive particles, including this air monitor, 13 miles from the plant, that's repeatedly found uranium-233, as well as other radioactive elements. DOE says all the results are significantly below limits set by state and federal environmental laws. But the health commissioner is convinced this plant is connected to the high cancer rates here, even if DOE disagrees. There's no transparency with DOE. You know, we ask questions, we don't get answers. You know, things happen, we don't get notified. Testing is underway right now to see if those radioactive particles have drifted even farther from the plant, as far away as 50 miles. If they're found, the health commissioner says, that would mean the threat posed by the Pike County plant would be much closer to both Cincinnati and Columbus. I'll continue investigating. I'm Dwayne Pullman, Local 12 News.